um, um, uh, uh, we are explaining the meaning of real numbers. Okay, so we're explaining the real meaning of real numbers, which is not directly needed for calculus. It's needed needed everywhere. So in, in particular in physics, we we do assume that the measurements are can be can be real. So or you visit, you have two points. You visit as you move. You visit every point between this point and that point. We're not skipping. And but but those real numbers are are complicated. Um, in in what sense? In the sense that uh, we have. Um, uh, real numbers uh, could be could have infinite decimal representations. Okay, so even a real number, it seems like uh, you just it's okay just to point out this is a real number, a real number here, real number over here. Okay, uh, but uh, if you, you want to deal with the specific numbers, then you end up with uh, decimal representations, and decimal representations might have infinitely many entries, uh, digits, including even one-third, infinitely many threes. And then, uh, and then we have one, actually, even though it is good as, as good as it gets, but there is alternative representation with a bunch of nines. Okay, so infinitely many uh, decibel, uh, infinitely many, uh, what I meant is actually not infinitely many decimal representations. I was, I was, I meant to say infinitely many, where is the eraser? This, uh, decimal, well, decimals. Infinitely many decimals, that's what I was going to say. Infinitely many decimals. Okay, so that, 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 that. Um, um, and, and we know uh, how we deal with infinity is it, we have to be very careful once again remember this uh, picture to be uh, to be uh, where is it yeah this one it's doing it again with choose I thought I did it yesterday paint always okay open yeah this one okay so uh, so this is what happens when you are treating infinity uh, to cavalier um, uh, there are just uh, uh, infinitely many steps, and you carry them out as if they happen at once, and then you have uh, you end up with uh, having zero equal to one. Okay, so we know how how to handle uh, that by now. Uh, just uh, very carefully, uh, wherever there are infinitely many steps, you how you treat it. You, there are there are the sequence behind it. So, do, do we uh, how we understand these infinitely many terms? Uh, there are uh, sequences, and there are limits behind. Okay, in particular, it is literally, uh, I have 0 0.3, 0 0.33, 0 0.333. It is a sequence, and it converges to one-third. Okay, so that's how we understand real numbers. In, in fact, you can say that, uh, um, you can say that uh, even, even better, uh, you can, uh, why does it work? Why this works? We just explain why, why it works because th this is a kind of fancy way of doing it. You replace a number which we think we understand, one-third, but also remember there is a pi, which we cannot really understand in any other way but infinitely many digits, okay? So, uh, so why, why does it work? Because, because of the rules of limits. Uh, it works, meaning that uh, all of these numbers now, uh, with this fancy and quite complex explanation, uh, uh, they are in fact um, uh, are subject to the same algebra. So that's why we can add, multiply, and divide. Okay, so because we can uh, add, multiply, and divide sequences. And if we do, their limits behave the way we want them be to behave, right? So, so we add two sequences, we add the, their limits. Okay, so that's why replacing uh, numbers with uh, limits of sequences that converge to them is okay. Representing numbers with infinitely many digits is okay. The, the algebra works out. 
Okay, so that, that's, the, the, that's the kind of a profound way of explaining why, uh, why everything works out with, the, with sequences and limits. So strictly speaking, that is, you do it sort of once, uh, and, and that, uh, you carry that explanation through the rest of calculus. Um, except in Calc 2, this will come up again and it, quite, quite in a profound way, so sequences uh, will be a big deal. Uh, but other than that, you just, you don't really have to think about it all the time. You can still uh, uh, look at it uh, this way. So this is, this is how you think of real numbers. It's a quantity, it is uh, maybe a point on the real line. Uh, all, of, all of these are valid explanations, and you know that the, well, the solid, there's a mathematic behind it that explains that everything is fine. You can do decimals, infinite decimals, it's still everything is fine. Okay? So, however, this idea, is, which you, I, I kind of almost suggested that you can just forget about it at some point, uh, <laughs> uh, there is a place where it is, it is more interesting, uh, uh, its applicability is more interesting, and that is uh, uh, infinity. So we have understood sort of uh, the meaning of real numbers uh, that uh, um, we understand them as, as uh, sequences and their limits. So that's what real numbers are. They're sequences of, of, of numbers that are frequently could or could be uh, like uh, maybe rational numbers. Meaning these are the rational numbers. So rational numbers don't, have, don't need necessarily uh, an explanation, but uh, at least they have infinitely many, I'm sorry, finitely many decimals, and then there is no doubt that these numbers are okay, uh, and we can do algebra with them. So, uh, okay, so that's an explanation, but uh, uh, what about infinity? Or infinities? plus infinity, minus infinity. Okay, so for one, we have to remember always, these are not numbers. So all that we understand about real numbers over there is, is really of no help. So whatever we have said about uh, 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 rules of, of limits, as well as the interpretation of real numbers as limits of sequences, uh, doesn't help. Okay, so, but still the question, it is an interesting question uh, of to ask, what if I take plus infinity and I add another plus infinity? Like this. Plus infinity plus another infinity. What do you think the answer is? If any. The, the plus infinity, right? Okay, so, so, so that's, you see why? You see, does it make sense? Well, I mean, if, if you were if you were questioning it, it is it is in fact uh, okay. It's not uh, more than okay because that's what mathematically you would you should do. It, from a math mathematical point of view, you you should not be doing things like that without a really good explanation. In, because infinity are not numbers, so you don't add them uh, just uh, uh, cavalierly. You have to if you do, then you at least have to explain why. Uh, but we don't even know what what is infinity. So what is uh, plus infinity? And, and then this analysis we just uh, carried out helps. Uh, this is how you could try to answer the question. Uh, it, is, it is the collection of all, all sequences that diverge to infinity, plus infinity. Okay? A very fancy explanation. But it is actually um, uh, allow it will allow us to do some algebra with infinity, and that is a, a big shortcut. Uh, being able to do at least some algebra with infinities, if we if we treat them correctly. So whenever you have infinity, there is uh, um, so so wherever you see infinity of any kind, there is probably a, a sequence somewhere or or, or in the limit. Uh, so here we have infinitely many decimals. The only way to understand its meaning is to think of it as a sequence, and and then its limit is what we're we're looking at. When you actually have an infinity, then uh, I, I'm, what I'm saying here is I replace that infinity with any sequence that, as long as it it diverges to plus infinity. So that that's my explanation of of infinity. All of the collection of those sequences uh, would be uh, would be um, uh, would be possible to. Uh, to, uh, to use. The, the point being, we have the sum rule for infinities uh, like this. So, um, 
well, this is the sum rule for infinities. So how do I explain it? Well, that's, that's how I explain it. A n goes to infinity, plus infinity. B n goes to plus infinity. OK? A n plus B n also then uh, goes to plus infinity. So if you have two sequences uh, diverging to plus infinity, then uh, their sum also diverges to plus infinity. OK? So that, that can be proven fairly easily. If you, it, it is certainly much bel more believable than what I have in the in the in that uh, bracket in the in the box over there. Okay. So 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 even if you question the one what's in the box in the box right uh, on left uh, here, this statement is it explains what it means and is much more believable. So once again, two sequences going to infinity both. I add these two sequences. What is the result? The result is the sequence also goes to infinity plus infinity. Okay? So, uh, so that, that's the good news. Uh, that is the good news. And then what's the bad news? What if I try to subtract two infinities? One plus infinity minus another plus infinity. Well, is it zero? Any other ideas? It could be infinity. It could be, uh, uh, or it could be zero too. I mean, th that's that's why this explanation is is so 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 uh, um, helpful. Uh, I can I can demonstrate that by choosing appropriate sequences, I could I will produce different answers. So so it could be zero. It could be in any number. It could be infinity. So well, let me show you. So uh, I could just choose. This is the first possibility. A n is equal to say, uh, a n. That's an example of a sequence that goes to infinity. And b n is equal to also n. I subtract. So both go to infinity, plus infinity, going to plus infinity. I subtract a n minus b n, which is 0. And that seems to be that the answer is 0. But it's not. Why the answer is not 0 in general? Because I could choose another in a pair of sequences. Say, for example, a n is equal to, um, how about n squared, which goes to infinity. And b n is still n, which is also goes to plus infinity. But when I subtract, what do I get? a n minus b n is n squared minus n. Where does it go? It goes to, to, it still goes to infinity. I think it is it is a parabola, you know, one of those. So so uh, uh, so n squared is so much stronger than n that it over overcomes or overpowers it, and uh, the whole thing goes to infinity. So uh, the point being that we have two answers, seemingly legitimate answers, for uh, for the difference of two sequences. So even though the sequences are similar, they behave exactly the same way as far as the limit is concerned. Bo in both cases, the limits both limits are infinite plus infinity infinity. However, when we subtract, uh, the result might be uh, very different. What's the conclusion? So if we have now two possibility, infinity plus infinity minus another plus infinity is zero, or is it plus infinity, or maybe something else? So what is the, if you make an observation like that, what's the conclusion? The it is undefined, yes. It's undefined. Undefined. Why? Because it could be equal to that or could be equal to this. So that, that's not good. We don't do algebra like that, right? Undefined. Um, um, sometimes there is a, there is a um, um, sometimes you can actually sort out what, what it is equal to. So, so, so sometimes uh, undefined maybe yeah the the this expression that I have here is definitely undefined so I, I cross it out so we never do algebraic operation like that with infinities subtracting infinities from each other okay but on the other hand this one is okay okay so that that seems like a pretty nice um, observation this is a good shortcut in green but in the red well we we don't want to subtract so that's the difference between uh, numbers and infinities 
they behave differently. Uh, even though we, we want to make infinities as close to numbers as possible, so, so once again, to make it easier to handle, and then we, uh, we might fail. So we, we failed here. Uh, if it is about limits, then, then we, we have ways to figure out what the, uh, the computation on the right always can be carried out. But if you just replace a sequence with its limit, it better be a number. If it is infinity, you might, might get into trouble. So the rules of, of infinities, so let me just uh, write it out here. Say, so rules of infinities meaning our rules of, of the algebra of infinities. So we already have, uh, say, a number. Well, well let, let's start with the, with the infinities uh, themselves, that rule that we just uh, considered. So uh, plus infinity, plus infinity, plus another infinity, positive infinity is equal to plus infinity. Okay. Uh, and uh, what else? Um, we could multiply. You see that I could multiply two plus infinities and one once again conclude that this is a plus infinity. Should I divide? Can I divide? Undefined. It's also undefined. So so this is bad, that is bad, these are all bad. So never never do algebra like this or with, with infinities. Uh, there is a little bit more and that is uh, I could take a number plus positive infinity is positive infinity, okay? So one number, naturally something is uh, very infinitely large or sequence going to infinity and you get a number, well, naturally the, the output is, uh, is still number, uh, a number. Now, no matter how large or how small, uh, the, the output will be, uh, will be um, still infinity. And then, and then you have similar rules for negative infinity. Um, well, Uh, okay, can you can you give me uh, three rules of, of negative infinities like these? You sure? Plus, yes. Okay. Uh, with multiplication. It's positive infinity, right. And finally, a number plus negative infinity is negative infinity. Okay, so once again, these are shortcuts. If somebody pushes uh, for an explanation, remember the explanation is just about every time you deal with infinity, there is some limit, limit. You, you explain it with limits, okay? So that, that can be explained, so we're good. Okay. Okay, so, um, well, actually, uh, probably there's one more. Uh, how, I, I, I think I missed it, this, uh, there is number four, sorry about that. If I have a number divided by plus infinity. It will be zero. In fact, plus or minus infinity, that also works as a shortcut. Also, it can be explained in the same manner with a limit. So the, the meaning of, of uh, plus or minus infinity is, is, is a, a sequence that, any sequence that diverges to infinity. Okay, so uh, on the other hand, in the meantime, notice that wherever I put a number, I could actually replace it with, uh, not with a literal number, I could replace it with a sequence that converges to that number. So in other words, for example, if I have 1 over n uh, plus 1 divided by n cubed, okay, as an example. So as you can see, the numerator converges to, it is converges to a number, right? The numerator converges to a number. This one converges to a number, uh, 1. And that one converges, where does it go? Positive infinity. So then, then they, we conclude. Then the answer should be zero. Okay. So that that's the the interpretation. So four rules, roughly, that we uh, might might find useful. Okay. So uh, so the next topic is computing limits. 
more of computing computing limits. Uh, computing limits with uh, with the, with those rules, with these rules that we had, but frequently we we just uh, we just uh, talk about uh, numbers and there are no infinities to worry about. Okay, so uh, so let me write out the rules in a more abbreviated way, um, like this: a n. Uh, okay, so so let me start here. So this is the assumption assumption here, so suppose that frequently theorems start, start with that, uh, A n converges to A, B n converges to B. Then we have four rules. Some rule uh, A n plus B n converges to A plus B. Okay, so, so you, you, you notice that I intentionally using the uh, different notation here. So we're used to uh, the notation with uh, lim. Okay, which is fine, but this is the other notation, and both of them are just about equally important. Frequently, I, I find the errors are more kind of a, um, explanatory. They, they explain, it's almost, uh, you, can, you can actually remember what, what the words behind it. So, A N goes towards A, B N goes towards B, or converges towards A. So, it's not equal to, but the arrow indicates that, that that's the, uh, the relation. You frequently you actually see it. Uh, pictures maybe even like this. Have you seen pictures like this maybe? Uh, indicating that uh, there is this uh, process of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of of convergence of, uh, of the, say, that curve that is getting closer and closer to certain horizontal line. Okay, so anyway, and then we have uh, some rule, n difference rule, constant multiple rule is C A N goes to C A. So A and C is a real number. Okay, uh, then we have the product rule, A n times B n converges to A b, A times B, and finally the quotient rule, A n over B n converges to A over B, provided B is not equal to zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some rules, constant multiple rule, product rule, and the quotient rule. Uh, this pretty much. So I, I could put, if I put minus here as well, uh, then I have a addition, subtraction here, multiplication here, and division there. Okay. And the constant multiple rule is just a. You realize the constant multiple rule is simply a particular case of the product rule. So we, it just happens to be, multi, but it's, that's why it's convenient. Uh, if you take the product rule and choose B n to be con a constant sequence equal to C. So if I s go here and I set B n is equal B n is equal to C, uh, then I'm going to get this. Okay? Because it's constant sequence of made of C's, it's limited C, and I have the constant multiple rule. But it is, it is sometimes uh, a more, um, it's just so simple that it's, it's very convenient. And, and the further, uh, later on, we'll have uh, we'll, some of the uh, product rule and the quotient rule might, might take a, become very, uh, look, might look very different. Or, but the constant multiple rule is, is still the same. So, um, well, you can imagine uh, how we, we could do these computations. Um, say, 1 over n minus 1 over n squared plus sine 1 over n. Okay, so, and I need to compute the limit. Compute the limit as n goes to infinity. Um, so when you carry out these computations, so you can, uh, this is how you could do it, uh, start analysis. So start, start here, uh, especially if you have addition subtraction available here, what do you do? Uh, you, you look at the terms one at a time. Okay, so for example, I would go ahead and, uh, and make sure that I know the limits of the, all of the participants. So one away, and where does it go? 
0, 1 on n squared goes to 0. I have another 1 on n, it also goes to 0. Unfortunately, it's in, inside of the sign, inside of the sign, so what, what? Oh, 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 hold on a second. Uh, first of all, the question I want to ask you, what is that sign 1 on n? What do we call it? This such a computation? Sign of 1 on n. What operation are we talking about? From last week? Are you referring to on the side n times 1 on n? Yes. Okay, let me help you out here. So how about I write it sign 1 over n? No, it says sign, you, to compute this, you first take n, then take its reciprocal 1 over n, and the next operation is sign. To the outcome of, of, of 1 over n, you apply sign. So what is it? <laughs> n, 1 over n, sign 1 over n. No, I, I, I actually want to step back and just uh, see if you remember uh, last week, uh, the discussion from last week uh, on the subject. It is, it is the uh, consecutive operations, what it's called. First take the reciprocal, then the sign. So that's not addition of functions. That's not subtraction, division, or multiplication. What is that, the fifth operation that we talked about? Combination, a combination of of functions in, a, in some particular way. No, I'm sure you remember. It's called the composition. The fifth operation on functions is called the composition. Remember? Now remember. So I would, I would just, uh, I just uh, uh, yes, threw a ball at you. What? Yes, it, yes. Well, that, that's why I brought up, and I was wondering if you remember. So uh, I guess it didn't sink, sink in, and, uh, and the, all the, the, uh, the point, I, I made this a big, big deal out of the point that the composition is so important. And they are, in fact, more important than these, uh, these uh, four algebraic operations that I have here. Uh, compositions are, in, in, in a sense, are more important. Um, and and that, that's, that's the, uh, well, certainly functions become very, way more complicated. You can see how I'm breaking up the, the whole, the, whole the, the idea that I'm, of the start is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply the uh, sum rule and how I break up my function, which is long, but I break it up easily into three functions, one, two, and three. But however, with the sign of one or n, it's not going to happen as easily because it's a composition. Breaking up composition is much more, more, more complicated. So, so uh, and then they have to be analyzed in a, in a, in a uh, similar, uh, similar manner, um, which is, so there will be another rule uh, applicable for, to these functions, but, uh, well, so we'll be revisiting this, this issue again and again, but uh, at this point, uh, what do you think the answer is for, for the limit? So one of n goes to zero, what about sine one of n? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1 on n, uh, yes, goes to 0. When does sine 1 on n goes? Only 0. Why? Because you add the fast. 
Oh, I right, let me graph you. If you want to graph it, I'll graph it for you. So uh, uh, this this is what sine looks like, oh, roughly. So y equals sine x right here. Uh, this is a graph of the function. So so your analysis is uh, your idea is correct. We are looking at the input of the. We determine that one of n goes to zero right right there, right here. Okay. Let me. Yeah. Okay. So, so that that part, I want to, maybe this would be the green one. So one of n goes to zero on the graph. Where is this behavior? Uh, uh, where is that relevant behavior be, is located here? Okay. So this is one of n. It is on the x-axis, and it is going towards zero. In the meantime, the sign is applied to uh, to these numbers so like this so over here it will be sine 1 o n okay so so we know what's happening on the x-axis 1 o n goes to zero as you did that's the green arrow uh, 1 o n is going slowly towards towards zero in the meantime uh, uh, sine 1 o n what's you can see what's happening with it Do you see what's uh, what's happening to one win? Wouldn't the uh, curvature of the sine one over n just slowly get closer and closer to zero because it would become less of a curve? Well, the, yeah. Uh, look, look at what's happening is on a, the uh, sine one win. Where is it? Where is it? It's not on the curve. It is on the y-axis. Okay. So imagine that axes are going towards towards zero. What's happening to the y's? No, they no, they're not going to go up. L look at it. Uh, let me do it again. So this is one value of, of y. Uh, so we start here. That's the first value of y. This is the second value of y. This is the third value of y. You see the pattern? It's decreasing. It's decreasing, and it will be getting closer and closer, uh, closer and closer to zero. So this is what I want to. This is this is this was what's happening with sine n. As one away n goes uh, right left towards zero. Sine one of n goes down towards zero too. So, so the the conclusion based on this fairly informal analysis, we conclude that the whole thing also goes to zero. Okay. So, uh, the explaining this will take some some, some time. It is uh, it is a big deal. Uh, it is there is something something special about about uh, the function sine that allows this uh, to be applied, and uh, um, it is uh, uh, so works because how to uh, justify this because sine x is continuous we're going to bring up this a few times in the future as well continuous meaning no gaps no jumps no gaps nor jam jumps in the in the graph of the function okay so that's why if x goes towards towards a certain location it drags y with it towards a location that that we can we can anticipate based on the on the uh, on the graph. So, both of the points are end up uh, both uh, all points that are on the graph of the function will end up here at the origin. Okay. So if we are moving along the graph, uh, to, uh, along the graph or right to left, uh, then we will end up at zero. Okay. And in the meantime, x is going to zero, y is going to zero as well, and that's explain why why sine one when uh, goes to zero. So that deserves more um, per, uh, long, longer explanations in, in, the, um, in, in the short term, um, in a short while. Uh, but at this time, let's just accept it for um, as stated, and let's just take uh, and, and draw the uh, final conclusion. So the limit of uh, the first term is zero. Okay, the limit of the second term is zero. The, uh, the limit of the third term is also zero. So what's the conclusion? Yeah, so the limit is zero according to, and this is a frequently, early on especially is, is, is important, but you will notice that it's calculus one is filled with these, with uh, references. Every time you draw a conclusion, you will make a reference to a specific statement or a theorem, a rule, a formula that you're applying at the time. So at some point you will do it less, because there will be more formulas 
Uh, but at this time, we have only these four rules. So we have to make a correct reference when we draw in this conclusion. The limit is 0 according to what? According to the sum rule, that's right. OK? So, so once again, if we, we are able to break um, uh, your, your sequence into uh, sum or difference of all the other sequences, and we know the limits of those sequences, we just compute and we just uh, reassemble them after we compute the limit. So we compute the, the limit of each of the parts, and then the end result is just the sum of those limits. OK? So uh, the sequences might be more or less complicated in the future, but this is pretty much all we, uh, all we have to worry about. OK, so um, um, uh, let, me, uh, let me show you where, uh, when we could run into trouble. Uh, well, let's have an example of, of when we, uh, everything is uh, predictable. Say I want, and I'm going to use the different notation this time. Say I have, um, um, I already did it, so let's do it one, one more time. 1 over n squared, and I uh, say I have uh, 2 to the n, n goes to infinity. Okay? Um, so the, the, the uh, tricky part um, about these rules, one, four rules, and they are not, don't, don't really look that long, look at these. So these are the four rules. They don't really look that intimidating, I hope. Uh, uh, but uh, they, sometimes there's, there's something tricky about it. And here the, the tricky part is that uh, um, what rule to apply? OK, so let, let's ask that question. What rule to apply? Which, which rule of the four to apply uh, if there is more, a, a bunch of operations involved? How do you determine? Just like the order of operations that you Yeah, the order and and in uh, algebra. No, no, the, the you look at the order of operations, but which of the operations do you pick? The very last or the very first? The very first. Uh, which is what? Yeah. Which is what? The last one. The uh, it is the last one. It is the last one. Just look at look at it. We just did it a minute ago exactly that. The last operation was this sub subtraction, this addition. So this was last, right? You first, if you, you are to evaluate the sequence, you first do 1 over n and 1 negative 1 over squared and then sign. And then to assemble together, you do subtraction division. OK, and that's why. And then we ended up with the sum rule. Why? Because this is because the last operation was addition. Similarly here, the last operation is division, right? So the last operation is division you first have to compute the numerator, then denominator, and then you divide. So the last operation is division. So use the quotient rule. OK? Now, so that's one tricky thing. So, but you, you will figure it out that, indeed, if you look at the last operation, that you know which, which rule to apply. So there are four operations, maybe five. And that will tell you which rule to apply, uh, to pick out of, out of four. Uh, the, there is a little bit subtle point here is uh, the, the applicability of the rule. Does it apply in the sense, in the sense of the, what the, our discussion yesterday? And that is the condition have to be verified before you apply the theorem. And these are the conditions. So these conditions have to be verified. Which, which means that the kind of backwards. We cannot yet apply the quotient rule, technically, until we know that the limits of the numerator and denominator uh, exist. I'm sorry. I, I, want, I think I want a negative here. Uh, yeah. Uh, shoot. Last one. Oops. Last one. Uh, just just modifying it slightly. So uh, so then to apply, they do uh, if the limits of numerator and denominator exist.
and the letter is not zero. So that's a very, very easy to, uh, to, to verify, have a uh, limit. So to verify limit 1 plus 1 and n squared, I computed, uh, what's the answer? 1 plus 1 and n squared. If the answer is 1, it is 1 plus 0. And, and to justify it, let me uh, show you how it is often done. Uh, I am applying. I just apply the rule. What was that rule? Addition. I just apply the sum rule. OK, and since I apply the sum, sum rule, this is how, if you want to really make it compact, you don't have to whenever. You can write as much as you like to explain every single word. But if you want to keep it compact, that's, that's how frequently it is written. So you say that two things are equal to each other, and above that equal sign, you explain why, why, how you know, how you justify it. And I'm explaining this by the sum rule. So this is a very compact way of doing it, uh, of explaining it, and it is, most of the time, it is um, uh, uh, acceptable. Okay? Similarly with the other one, once again, it is going to be the sum rule. So by the sum rule, uh, what's the answer? It's still one, yeah. So because uh, so it will be zero plus one is equal to one. Once again, it's by the sum rule. You might have to, uh, in either case, to provide if you need details. You have to explain not in the homework, uh, not in the online homework, but other, uh, frequently if it is the test or, or anything written in assignment. Then you might also have to explain even why is one n squared, why its limit is equal to one, and you have to maybe find some reference to that. So so uh, like like this. This one goes to zero and that one also goes to zero uh, in, in the latter case we, 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 had a, we discussed that earlier this week so it is 1 over n squared remember we talked about powers so it, we, it is uh, n negative 2 and we know they, those are going to zero whenever they, that, that, that power is, is, is uh, less, than one, less than zero and uh, what do we call these, these sequences if you remember Two negative n. What kind of sequence is that? This 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 is a power. Uh, you can you can just say it's a power of n. Okay. This is not a power of n. It is. Uh, if it's not a power, then what is it? Is it is the exponent? What? Root. Root. Uh, um, no, it's not a root. Root is when when the uh, the power is um, fractional. Say one half that square root one third cu cubic root. Uh, this is exponent, but a function that's involved here is the exponent. But uh, we call it a geometric. Remember now, uh, a geometric progression, with um, because as you progress, you multiply by what number? No. By one half. Right, two two negative n is equal to one half to the n. So that's you remember division turns into uh, turns into uh, into into the uh, denominator. Okay, so so negative n it will be just just if you in any doubt just uh, write out a few elements of the sequence. It will be n is equal to zero will be one n is equal to two to one is will be one half two negative one that's one half n is equal to 2, and 2 negative 2, it will 1 over 2 squared, and so on. Okay, so, so anyway, that, that's how you would, in addition, justify, justify that, that computation. So as you can see, uh, the, the function is, the, the, uh, rather, the, the limit is fairly complicated because there are so many moving parts. But if you just unwrap it little by little, you can, uh, you can apply the sum rule twice. You apply some prior information about the, the, a few basic limits, the powers, as well as geometric progression. And finally, this is we just justified uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that yes, uh, the quotient rule is applicable because the two limits uh, exist and not equal to zero. Okay? So that's 
the limit of one and the denominators of one, which means that therefore, by the quotient rule, our limit, one plus one over n squared, two negative n plus one, is equal to one over one by the quotient rule, and goes to infinity, and is equal to one. Okay? So this is um, frequently how uh, a kind of question you face. Um, there might be a problems, I think, uh, the, the current homework, the current online quiz, as I prefer to call it sometimes. Uh, so there's a problem like that, I believe. Um, so, so this is the good news, even though there, is, there are many moving parts, and you have to apply, apply some rule twice, quotient rule once, uh, this extra information, one and the other, uh, but uh, things did work out. It is what uh, happens when uh, then you realize that they don't. So uh, let me take another quotient that is not, that is similar, say, uh, how about this? Uh, n squared plus one over n squared minus one. Okay, so, um, same order of, of thinking, uh, the same approach is the order of operations. And what is the last one? Is the same, it's still division. And the analysis is right here, we, we are pretty much repeating it, the same, same one, so what rule to apply? Last operation is division, so apply the quotient rule. Does it apply, that's an orange, and you have to demonstrate that the limit of, uh, of, of the enumerating denominator exists and the letter is not equal to zero. So apply quotient rule. Apply, does it apply? Does it apply? Well, what's the limit of the numerator? Well, you know the answer. We talked about that. Um, um, no, we actually did not talk about it, but it's definitely not one. It's not on the list, is it? This is the list. Oh, well, actually, in the right corner over there. It is bad, so let, let's explain why, why it's bad. Why you, you don't want to divide infinity. That, that's what appears to be uh, well, you, you should have started with the observation that uh, uh, is that the limits are actually both infinite. So limit n squared plus 1 is infinity. The limit n squared minus 1 is also infinity. So, but before we actually try to do anything with this, what is the, uh, we know that we probably don't want to apply any of the rules with infinities. So uh, what's the first conclusion to, to, to make is to answer the question. What's the answer? No, the, the, that's the, the question is right there. Apply quotient rule, does it apply? What? Uh, no. No, look at it. Uh, does it apply? It does not. Da, does um, so the limit, uh, the, the quotient rule does apply when the limit of the numerator and denominator exists and the letter is not equal to zero. The limits do not exist. They are not certainly not numbers as numbers. So to, for the quotient rule to be applicable, both of them have to be uh, convergent. The, they are divergent. So, so no, quotient rule does not apply. Okay, because, well, but because of that, that, uh, that reason. I mean, you have to verify, before you apply any rule, theorem, formula. Verify the conditions. Everyone comes with conditions. You don't want to apply the Pythagorean theorem before you verify that the triangle you're looking at is the right triangle. Okay, so same thing here. If they are not convergent, well, then uh, you, you don't have to worry about the uh, quotient rule whatsoever. Which means that they, then we're stuck because 
there is no, uh, there is nothing else to apply. The last operation is division. So that determines what the uh, rule to apply. We cannot suddenly apply the sum rule. Okay. So um, now this is a very, this is a subtle point. The subtle point that we have to make is what is the, what is the, um, um, we have made the conclusion about the applicability of the quotient rule. The, the question is what to do. So what do you do after that if the quotient rule nor, nor, nor any of the other rules apply? We already knew that others don't apply because that last operation is division, so it doesn't apply. So what to do? Uh, and the answer is do not try to guess the answer. It, no, well, that, that's, that's the thing about it. Uh, the failure of, of the, have you heard this expression, the absence of the proof does not mean the proof of, a, of, a, of the absence. So that's roughly the same thing. So just because we are, were unable to compute this limit doesn't mean that it does not exist. Okay, so, so in a way we failed. We failed. Uh, that not, we, we, we failed to figure out the limit and, uh, and that doesn't mean that we should give up. Uh, so there are ways to do it and the, the answer is uh, pretty much just about every time the answer is algebra. Okay, the, it is possible that the, our expression is simply in a bad form. It's inconvenient for us to apply and when we did try to apply it we ended up with a quotient for which is not applicable and we're stuck. So we transform the, uh, the limit, the expression that we have that sequence in such a way that the, uh, it would work. And how we, we either, there, there are many ways, but in this particular case, uh, I wanted to transform the, this fraction in such a way that the limit of numerator would exist and the limit of the denominator would exist too. Any, I, I'm, I'm wondering if you've ever seen it uh, or you have an idea what can be done with this. Well, what, the, what makes the uh, numerator go, or denominator go to infinity? It's, it's n squared. So how do I get rid of n squared? Square root. What? Square root. No, you, you see, you see I, this, is the, this is the important thing is I cannot transform it arbitrarily. Uh, I, otherwise, I would just multiply it by zero and say, "Well, it's a zero." Okay, so I, I have to I have to make sure that whatever I write next is equal to this. So the square root would, wouldn't help. You could have uh, n square over n square minus one and plus one over. I say say it again. What? You could have uh, you break up the top of or the numerator. Yeah. Uh, I think you're talking about this. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that that's that is algebra, and it is it is a, a good try. Uh, the 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 suddenly the limit uh, this one is okay uh, is um, it's it's not a quotient rule, but we know what the limit of the of the second term is. What is it? Well, the denominator goes to infinity, the numerator go, is number, so the answer is what? Uh, you can think of it as 1 over infinity. Zero. It is 0, okay. Well, so that, that's good. Unfortunately, we have the same trouble as we had originally. We still, the first fraction is still infinity over infinity. As far as limits are concerned, uh, concerned, the numerator goes to infinity, so does the denominator, and we are in the same place. So l let me just show you the, tr the trick uh, that uh, um, it's probably hard to think of unless you've seen it. And uh, you just, uh, what you do is divide by n squared. So I take numerator, divide by n squared. I take the denominator and also divide by n squared. Okay, certainly these two are equal to each other. Right, so so we are we are fine. What's on the left is the same as on the right. We but as I tr start to transform it further, uh, it turns out that is helpful. What's the numerator? Will be one over one o n squared. 
What's the limit of the denominator? 1 minus 1 on n squared. Okay, so you see what has happened? What's the limit of the, of the numerator? 1. 1. And denominator? 1. Also 1. So the conclusion is? The limit's 1. The limit's 1. What do I put here? Above the equal sign? Quotient rule, right. The quotient rule, now it applies, right? The numerator has a limit not equal to zero, denominator not equal, not equal to zero. There you go. Uh, the limit is then, um, um, uh, the limit is one. So, so, uh, so the, the lesson here is that you might, may have to do some algebra in order to compute some limits, even though these four, four limit rules that we have are, are very, should, should take care of everything. Now, uh, one more thing that is not taken care of, uh, of by, by these four rules is what we just uh, alleged to, is, uh, is what to do about compositions. So what to do about compositions. So once again, sine, sine 1 over n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity because... 1 away n goes to 0. And the explanation that I suggested is that there is a something special about this function. Okay? You can think of example when this is not going to be the game. Let me show you the example. There is a very important function that is not because uh, to reason sine is continuous to be explained what it is. Let me show when this example, when this does not work out, if we have a, a different function that's not continuous. The function is called the sine, coincidentally. Um, the sine function. Okay, have you seen it before? It is the, literally the sine uh, of, of the number. It could be either plus, minus, or zero. So, so the function e is either equal to uh, zero or or negative uh, zero uh, one negative one or zero like this. Okay, the sine function. Sometimes you just write sine. Uh, y is equal to sine of x. So these are x's. These are y's. If x is larger than zero, you have one. If it is zero to zero, when it's uh, less than one, it's negative one. Okay. So, um, so then you can see what uh, the way it works out. Sine is continuous, and sine of zero is equal to zero. So that's why it works out. Sine, the other sine, sine of zero is also equal to zero. Right, right, that point over here, sine of zero is equal to zero. Now, if we try to use this in order to compute uh, sine of one over n. So 1 over n, so uh, what, is it, what is it equal to as n goes to infinity? Uh, 1 over n goes to 0 still. So my, my, all my 1 over n numbers are here on the x-axis. These are the values of the sign. So the, what is this equal to? 1 over n goes to 0. What is the, what is it, the value of the sign? Is it positive or negative? 1 to n. Positive. positive. So the value of the subfunction is positive. positive specific. I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the numbers here. 1 and negative 1. The value is negative 1. Uh, is 1 then. Is, a, is a going to be equal to 1. So no matter what n is, for each n, the value of the function is 1. You can see it on the graph. These are the, these are the points right here. All, all of them are equal to 1. So what's the limit then? The limit is 1, too. So then, as, as, as we just computed, uh, I you summarize it by saying that uh, sine 1 over n is 1. Right? 
Sine 101 is equal to, e, to, to e, uh, no, I'm sorry, um, the, I, I was supposed to have an error here. Uh, one as n goes to infinity. Okay, so uh, so you see the, the, the mismatch, right? What's the mismatch? One and zero, right? So the value of the function is zero, but the limit is is one. And it comes from the fact that there's a hole in the graph, right? So you you, you know what the, uh, when you have a, um, a curve with a uh, empty little, little circle at the end, it it means that the the there's a missing point here. So it, it it means that that straight line does not go all the way to the x to the y axis, but rather the last point is missing. Sometimes elsewhere you might see it uh, written like this, like this maybe. Instead of instead of a, a, a circle, you have a, you have an arrow. Doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter. The uh, there is a mismatch between the value of the function as well as its limit, and uh, and it is turns out to be quite important because you can see from the graph why why this wild behavior. Look at what's happening at zero. No, the, 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 that's right. There's a skip, there's a gap, there's a jump. The function is not continuous. So the continuity of the function is what uh, creates a problem. So this is not continuous. Okay, so we'll continue this next time about these functions. They're very important. <laughs>